Are there people on um, no. Zoom? No. Just recording. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We're, we're in the I know. I thought there'd be more yeah. Chicken. Oh, right. That's right. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for coming to the top producer interview. These are the women of the ALC. <laughs> the rocker chickens, I say chicks. Okay. Um, these women are top producing agents and they've been doing real estate for a few years. Nobody here is less than two years, correct? Okay, great. So yeah, so everybody here has been new. They've got, they've gone with a mentor. Most of them are probably going to be mentoring again, going to be mentoring or new time. agents or yeah. tormenting. <laughs> and, um, and they are amazing women. Not only do we have a great display of intelligence, wisdom, uh, market knowledge, and negotiation skills right up here before you, but we have great leaders. And that's why these women have accepted the invitation to join the ALC, the Associate Leadership Council, which means that they're in the top 20% of the office and they were invited to participate on the board of directors to help make decisions that affects everybody here in our office. You are always invited to attend the ALC meetings. And um, if you, I might, I would encourage you to come to the next one because we got a big thing coming down the pipeline that's gonna be happening regarding profit share. So we're gonna discuss it at the next meeting because we haven't received the paperwork yet, but ALC is something that's really powerful and amazing. And I hope that you can participate and you know, come to the meeting. So um, what I'd like to do first and really briefly, because we've got a lot of women up here, um, I want you to say your name, how long you've been in real estate, and if you know what your production was last year. So, Jelaine, can I start with you? Sure. Uh, Jelaine Forrester, been in the business 16 years, and my production was, I think, $23 million plus. Hi, I'm Kristen Romig. I've been in real estate for almost five years. I think my production was close to 14, I think. Hi, Denise Myrick. I've um, been a realtor for 12 years and sold, well, 29 units and 11, so 40 units. Actually, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I what, what, <laughs> what metal did you get, did your team get? And yeah, did, were you a platinum? Yeah, they were. Yeah, we were platinum. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Thank you. I'm Sandy Sheldon. I've been in real estate since November 2019. So is that going on four years? Mm -hmm. And um, last year, my production was about 12 minutes, 15 million. Awesome. Diana E here. Um, I was an assistant for a year and a half, and then uh, on my own for five years. My production was 20 something in the last year. I'm Judith Vansberger. I've been doing these for four and a half years, and my production mm -hmm. last year was 26 million. Um, I'm Therese Ferrara. I'm on a team with the Goss, we're business partners. I don't exactly know my individual production because it's all very convoluted. I want to say we made 35, 48 units, something like that last year. Yeah. So, and what was your team's medal? God, listen, I'm going to ask. Yeah, so, so we did get one. Though. Yeah, I'm sure it was platinum. <laughs> Something like, I just didn't know if it was like triple or quadruple, but I know because didn't you guys win the award for a uh, top team um, group? Yes, I probably have that ever. I probably have that. And I did get the buyer agent of the year as well. So oh, that's right. Agent. Buyer agent of the year. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. That was nice. That's why this hair is gray. Thank you. Jackie? Um, I'm Jackie Miano. I'm Mark's wife. <laughs> no, I know Mark is your husband. Is your husband. Well, yes, according to Mark, he's your husband. I don't have any gray hairs because my daughter's a daughter. <laughs> and, uh, I, don't, I can't tell you, Mark keeps track of all, but everything goes through him. 
as far as numbers. Um, I know we work really hard and I have been doing real estate. Are you ready? <laughs> Drum roll. Oh. Over 30, I think it's 34 years. Wow. Wow. Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I you started at the nursery. That's great. Selling cribs. So, um, Shannon Groves, she's not here, but she is, um, she's been doing real estate for almost 20 years. She and I are like a month apart. And um, her team has done very well. I don't remember what her production level is. She didn't be here today because she's in San Diego and she had come up previously to record her, um, her television program, The American Dream. So she did ask me to remind everybody here that she is doing real estate in San Diego. So if you have any referrals, please think of Shannon. Um, and then I have been doing real estate for almost 20 years, and um, I don't know what my production is. I think it was around 15, 16. I can't remember. That was our team. But our team got um, quadruple gold. So I was, I was pretty happy with that. Yeah. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll get started. If you have any questions, kind of hold on to them because we've got a lot of us here. So I want to get as much information as possible. And then we'll have time um, to take some of your questions if they're not answered while we're going up. And because I know all of you guys, I'm just going to kind of like do this as a conversation because we're used to being in a room together, working and discussing. And so, um, you know, I'm just going to put the question out there. And just if you want to answer, then go ahead. We'll try that way. This is the biggest panel I've ever had. So, <laughs> so um how many of you guys had mentor? Raise your hand. Had mentor. Had, had a mentor when you first started real estate. Awesome. So my question is, what is the um, what is the one thing that you learned from your mentor that you still do today? Jackie, read the contract. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's great. That was Chuck. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what he always would say when there was an issue. When I started, he would be like, get out of here, go read the contract, and come back and tell me the answer. That's and awesome. And Mark does the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. And then, um, and so then everybody here, you know, with Mark Miano being our broker, you guys all know that read the contract, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Judith. For me, is the personal touch. So my mentor was Kelly, and from the beginning, she she showed me how personable she is, and she approaches every new client as you know, as as a human being, as a person that is having an event happening in their lives. You know, like she goes to a listing appointment with a little plant or something that says. Thank you for opening your home to me. So I try to keep that and, and do it every time I can. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. Teresa. So kind of along the contract line, um, the biggest thing, and I think I, I do it with some of the people that come to me for help, is I just say, do your best on it, and then we'll, I'll help you after that. Because that makes you read the contract. So that's what Doug would say to me. The first offer I was writing, he's like, so just... Do your best. I'm like, <laughs> okay, what does that mean? Because you go to contracts class and you don't really, if you don't, if you've never done it and you've never put it into play, you don't really know what fields you're supposed to fill out. Like there's three under the loan. Which one is it? Is it the second loan? The first loan? Is it the, you don't know. You don't know any of those things. And so that's, that was one of the things that he was just like, just go and do it and bring it back to me. I'm like, Really? <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. And so I, I do put that on too. I think I'm a little more hands-on than, than that one at the beginning, but now I'm kind of a freak about the contract. So yeah. <laughs> Kristen. I was lucky enough to have Dwayne as my mentor. And I would say, I mean, just overall, we all know how wonderful Dwayne is, but I just think um she was sometimes just a calming force, like when I would spin out of control, and I still sometimes spin out of control. So she's just a calming force to just let me know that, like, 
we have resources here. It's going to be okay. You know, it's not life or death situations. And so, you know, just kind of stay the course and, and be you really. Mm -hmm. That's great. Thank yeah. you. So um, one of the things about being in real estate is, you know, it's, it's definitely a decision to choose to become a business owner and leave the nine to five corporate world. Um, what made you decide to do real estate? In my time, it was archaic because not everyone even had a cell phone at that time. Cell phones were like a newer mm -hmm. device. A lot of people still had beepers. <laughs> and pagers, I guess they're called. And I was divorced and I hadn't worked and had quite the good life. I wanted to continue that good life. And um, I foolishly thought <laughs> I would have, I would be my own boss, which I am, but I'm a mean boss. <laughs> and so I, um, I thought I would have the time to participate as I always had in children's um, sports or field trips, but I soon saw that maybe that wasn't going to be the case all the time. So, mm -hmm. but that's why I started because it looked like independence to me. Yeah. Did anybody else have that idea too, Judith? Well, for me, I was in corporate. I was doing sales and marketing and I was a director and the whole thing, but there were several reasons. The first one was why real estate and not something else? Well, I realized that in my free time when I was in the corporate world, I was looking at Redfin and properties and I also had invested in my own properties. So definitely that was something that I like to do. And then on top of that, um, in corporate, I felt that in my particular case, it was a, a, not a women's world, but a man's world. And my voice was not heard. Mm. And I'm, you know me, I speak my mind <laughs> too much sometimes. So I wanted to be in an environment in which I could be my own boss and make my own decisions. And third, um, some of you know that I'm into, you know, um, spirituality, salsa, mm -hmm. life coaching and all of that. And I really care about helping people. And in the corporate world, I felt that I was just selling goods and moving stuff around, but not really making a difference. And in real estate, even though it is a transaction and it's commercial and all of that, we're making different a difference in people's lives. So those three things made it really obvious for me. That's nice. Yeah. Thank you. Diana, um, I think of the odd one here because I didn't choose to be in this industry. I was chosen because someone asked me to be her assistant. Mm -hmm. And then the environment circumstances pushed me here. Uh -huh. So um, at first, when I uh, went to Alan, my mentor, and uh, I have choices at that time that I can join, be partner with other agents. Uh, when I started my own, and uh, he said, you can do it. Mm -hmm. And yesterday I asked him something and he said, you can have it all. Okay. <laughs> well, so if I can stay here and uh, I feel like being present and working hard is really important. So since you're here and you can be here next year. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you're here on a 2.30, 2.30 on a Thursday. That's tough. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. When, um, when, you, <clears throat> when you guys got into real estate, what was the biggest surprise that you learned? I know, Jackie, you had talked about, you know, you thought you would have more free time. Um, were there any other surprises besides that? That getting the real estate license was the easy part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... I think I was surprised with how much money, what's possible. Mm -hmm. And for many years, early on in my career, and that's why I like to mentor, is that I had no idea what was possible. I was, like Diane, I totally fell into real estate by accident. And, you know, I'm a slow learner, so it took me a while. But I finally, that was a surprise when I went, oh, yeah, there's, there's people making life-changing money. And that was, that was like a whoa. That was inspiring and 
kind of a I feel very privileged. Now, did you learn that, Jelaine, um, before you came to KW? No, no, no. I came, I'm, I started as small independent. So again, being an anti-corporate person, I am, you know, smallest possible brokerage to the biggest. So it's kind of crazy. Um, so yeah, no, I, I didn't know what all the numbers were. I didn't know numbers before I came to California. Mm, and so now you know the numbers, like what your what your um, goals are and, and what your people well, just, just understanding the language of, of the whole industry. I again being from a small independent, I didn't have a mentor. I had a broker who, you know, she took her money. That was it. You know, I had no support. So I know what it's like to be in the you know, desert, crossing the desert with mana or no mana. <laughs> um, so, or, or you know, Monza. Anyway, um, so, and I remember the reason I mentor too is that she always told me, why would you go on tour? Why would you get to know other agents because they're your competition? Oh, and I was like, well, that made a lot of sense to me at the time. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the biggest. So when you said, what did I learn from my mentor? If she were my mentor, right? I learned not to do it, yeah, not to do that. <laughs> yeah. So I think the lesson is even when something goes wrong, there's a lesson in it for you. Even when you have challenges, there's a lesson and, and there's always something to learn. So that's what I learned from her. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Sandy? I think the thing that really surprised me is that I really love about real estate is there's room for everyone's personality, everyone's specialty, <laughs> skill set, pillar, whatever you're... Who are, I sell to a lot of mountain bikers. I spend a lot of time mountain biking and they want to buy houses too. So, you know, you, everyone has their pillar. I don't think I'm competing with anyone in the mountain biker niche, right? <laughs> right? So we're not competing with each other. We can all help each other build on Absolutely. things and you can be as creative as you want with your marketing or not. I mean, you can do it a million ways. You can do it your way. And there's always something new to try. So that's what I also love about it. It's like something new every day. I love that. <clears throat> yeah, because you get to be as unique as you really are. And you're going to find your people, right? And it's like, even if I did mountain biking and you did mountain biking, we'd still have different people yes. that would be attracted to us, right? right? Yeah, I love that. Yeah, thank you. Um, Jackie? Well, something Jelaine said, I have to tell you, I wrote down a lot of notes today and I, because... I'm kind of on a personal growth mission. And you said something, Jelaine, and it's already escaped my old head brain, but it, I wrote down to succeed is a win, to fail is a win, to do nothing is to never know your potential. And a lot of people I see in here kind of just wandering around and lost, and it's easy to get lost in this market because it's, it's very different from what we are used to and mm -hmm. you know going to an open house and meeting a buyer and putting him into contract six contracts later but or you know getting a listing and putting the sign out <clears throat> things have changed and i hear that in the conversations with mark and like last fall people were calling in and saying i just got a buyer request for repairs what should I do? I mean, because that was something that they had never experienced before. So there's just so much to learn here. Right, right. And I love that you talked about, you know, if you, um, the failure part, I, I don't remember the exact words, but it brought up the idea of that failure, right? Failure is just an event. It's not you, right? And so failure is necessary for success because if you have a failure occur, that means that you're trying and you've just found a way it's not going to work, right? Just like Albert Einstein, you know, he found all these ways that light bulbs won't work. And then he found the one way it does. So failures are good. Thank you. I, I want to ask, what do you guys think resiliency is? What, what's your definition? <laughs> Just listen to it on um, okay. Oh, is that Ed? My, my, it was between. Oh, well, okay. what do you think resilience? Just throw out some words. Bouncing back. Just to keep trying. Still with it. Still with it. Okay, so, <laughs> so you, what I have been exploring is the definition is really bouncing back. But through resiliency, usually comes with adversity or something that changes. And 
when you think about it, every time that you have an experience, your brain rewires and you learn something and you come back on the other side of it, a different person, probably a better person, and you don't bounce back, you bounce forward. So yeah, that was something I wrote down. I love that. I love that. Diana, you wanted to say something? Yeah, because uh, when I found out on KPA, my job match as an agent is way, 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 way at the last couple. I was so shocked. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like what what was your what was your job match? Job match, first of all, engineer. Oh, <laughs> second of all, team leader. <laughs> agent is way, way back, but uh, team leader. <laughs> but I feel like um, <laughs> if I can do it. Real estate, uh, for me, I feel like real estate is science mm -hmm. because you get all the manuals, science, mm -hmm. art, and math. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not hard. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's an engineer talking right now. <laughs> <laughs> you can read it. It's like science. <laughs> She's all comfortable in that. And when, for me, I'm like, oh my god, that is so stressful. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's great. And, and you have used your engineering skills to to make your um, real estate business successful. I'm not an engineer. I but was the, I was the mindset in the field. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Denise, and just a couple with that. I mean, because my background actually is um, program management from high tech, and I'm and so I went in when I came into real estate. Jim's been in it forever. I mean, I was heels first. I did not want to do this at all. And um, you know, when we did all the compatibility tests because we were really um, struggling in the beginning as team co-team um, we're overlapping and you know him he's vibrant and he's an amazing negotiator and a great leader and I am a very detailed background person so once we kind of figured our boundary lines and I treat every client as a project and so I use my skills in that respect and we actually work very well together now we're finally in sync and I'm fine. We were then. <laughs> we have been married for a while. Yeah, so. yeah, we're, 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 it's just you learn. You know, you can. What I'm saying though is that the skills that you had before, there's always room to make it work with dealing with clients. I and mean, use your skills, and then you know, fill in the back, join the team or whatever. But you know, if you're not, because I'm not a salesperson, like great, and I didn't think I could, but I can. But I, I like the way that I. Approach and most of our clients are engineers, so they usually um, work well with me. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you're very detailed oriented, right? And um, and I think that just your way of your style is like ideal for preparing listings. Just who you are personally and your taste in furniture and design, like I think that's a really good fit. You guys really like melded together. It's beautiful to see. Therese, you wanted to say something? Well, I was just going to say, I don't think, when, when I got in the business, I didn't really get in necessarily for any major reason I was teaching before. I had their hours, I was a substitute, so I thought, oh, I don't need their hours anymore, let me dabble in this, and didn't know that it was going to be as hard as it was. That doesn't mean, and I thought it was going to be easy, though, in some sense, mm -hmm. but I didn't realize how difficult it was, and I was like, yeah, you could be my buyer agent. I'm like, okay, well, that sounds fantastic. Okay, great. And so you jump into it and now I know how difficult it is working with buyers. Hallelujah to everybody who does. Um, navigating and teaching them and, and, and it's like teaching them a letter of the alphabet every day. Every day, it's like the same, they don't understand. And I try to put myself in their, in their position. Like if I'm going to learn French, I know nothing about it. And I'm going to ask a lot of questions and I'm going to not remember what we means or whatever. Like, I'm not going to remember that. So I really try to put myself into their shoes and regroup and say, okay, well, let's go over it again. Okay, let's look at it again. Let's look at, you know, and then, but then I will get super pragmatic and say things like, I understand that that's a concern, but there is a cost of ownership. So I'll kind of like, if they're, if they're going down a rabbit hole over something so silly, like needing a, Needing a tenting of the house or something, I'm yeah. like, yeah, there's going to be a small cost <laughs> here. So, so I, I you just learn what what is going to be important and what you can kind of pass off as 
I realize that's important, but let me tell you, this is how it's going to be remembered. And it just, you just evolve into your style. You really do. Mm -hmm. You really do. And I know that you were a teacher before you got into real estate, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so bringing those skills with you to real estate, <clears throat> that's, you know, I think that that's a really good benefit because we're, we're teaching our clients every day how to do, you know, how to buy their house and how to sell it. And I did make um, some pretty big mistakes early on, or I don't use or whatever, but, and it took me a little while to, to figure this particular one out. I couldn't figure it out. I would go right to the kids. Whenever I'd meet a buyer, I'd go right to the kids and I'd get them. Now, they're still very important in this transaction. However, I made them the most important mm -hmm. because that's what I was doing. And it took me months to figure that out. I'm like, okay, why are you talking to them? <laughs> They're not going to buy the house, but that's what I gravitated towards. So they still get treats and I still, hey, how you doing? Oh yeah, we'll get, we'll get to that in a minute or whatever. But I'll, it took me a little while to figure that out. I would, I would cater to the kids. Mm -hmm. I love that you share that, that you shared <clears throat> something that you learned and then you were able to make the adjustment and go to the you know buyers yeah, right that was a, yeah that was, that was a tough lesson to learn because i'm sure i lost a few buyers over that because i wasn't catering to what they wanted from me mm -hmm. so yeah and that's interesting so for me one of the things that i learned was just because i'm family or just because i know people and they know me they're not going to work with me and i thought that they would so that awareness was like, boom, what? You're not going to work with me? And so once I got comfortable with the idea that, you know, family, some of them are going to want to work with you because they want to support you. And some of them were, you know, they don't want you to know like what their personal stuff is or usually their finances, or they just want somebody more experienced. And so once I got comfortable with that, then they were like, oh, well, well we want to interview you too, right? It was like, oh, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> so that was like my, one of my big things that I learned. Did anybody else have anything else that they wanted to say right now before I let them ask any questions? No? Anybody have any questions that you want to ask? Now's the time, like, no? So we're good so far? Okay. Well, no, I think the question I have, I'm sure many of them have it in a, a, a little different way. But, you know, going out to the streets or go meeting somebody in some place and be, be, uh, bring in the real estate uh, uh, issues, how do you go about doing that? Because sometimes, uh, in my mind, sometimes you want to bring it up, probably they're going to think about commission or anything which you are not thinking, but how do you approach a new person or a friend and doing real estate? Uh, if you need real estate, come to me. <laughs> so oh, are, are you asking, how do you bring up the topic of real yes, estate? Yes, yes, how do okay. you bring it up? So, so my son is an uh, old, old soul and he's gonna turn 21. And I've always told my kids, that the best way to bond with people is to ask them a lot of questions. I don't know if any of you have noticed this. I've noticed it all the time. People don't ask questions, typically. <clears throat> so Joseph, what I would say to you is, is ask, what, ask about them first, make it about them first, and then they feel the obligation to reciprocate. And if they don't, then I would, whatever response you get, like even where you live or what have you. Oh yeah, my college. Yeah, I had a listing in that neighborhood. You can always insert something about real estate, but first make it about them because they, they most likely will reciprocate. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else want to? I think it's just everything in my mind has to do with confidence. It really does. And you have to feel comfortable with yourself and somehow real estate's going to come up in my in my world and i think it's just feeling like okay i'm ready you could ask me any question and i'm going to answer it and if i'm not going to answer it i can fake it but I mean, I think <laughs> okay, so Jackie, <laughs> 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 in our classes, 
We talk about if you don't know the answer, this is a life or death situation. We don't have to fake it. We can tell them, I don't know that answer right now, but I will get right back to well, you. Yes. <laughs> I said, I figured it out. There's a little bit of, when I say fake it, I don't think I'm sounding like a inappropriate answer. I mean, yeah. you, you use things like, how much, what is your production? Oh my gosh, my company. <laughs> Or my office, yeah. or my teammates. Mm -hmm. That's that's not really faking it. It's not really your production, but it's everybody. Oh my gosh, our mm -hmm. office last year sold blah 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 units, or we're the number one. We were number one last year. Like you can like kind of fake it that it's not yours. It's not a lie. It's just you just have to learn to tell the people that you're talking to <laughs> a bigger, better story than that little whisper in your ear that's telling you you can't right it's back to the confidence yes yeah because they're already not a client yeah. <laughs> so you have nothing to lose yeah. really yeah. you're gonna lose so to answer joseph question let me tell you my experience so when i started before in the corporate world i was traveling a lot yeah. so i didn't really contact my soi every week or every month. I wasn't like calling actively people unless they were my very close friends, right? Because I was busy and I didn't have the need to do it. So in the beginning, when you start contacting them, it's kind of awkward, right? So I sent everybody the introductory letter. I let them know, I put it in my social media. And then my first call to somebody that I had never called before was awkward, right? And we started kind of talking and then I said, well, if you know anybody, whatever. I hang up, next month I called again, but I made it a point not to talk about real estate. So I called and she was like, oh, hi Judith, uh, you know, I'm driving and I don't have that much time. I could sense that she didn't want to talk about real estate. She didn't want to be bothered. And I'm like, that's totally fine. I just wanted to check on you. I remember what we talked last time. Are you doing okay? Or when do you want to have a coffee? I didn't even bring it up. So then in a way, I educated her that next time I call, it's not about real estate and that's all that she matters to me. Actually, I'm calling just to talk a little bit. And, but it takes a couple of iterations until you get to that point. So in the beginning, it's going to be awkward. Mm -hmm. And so you're nurturing the relationship, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Because you go from not having that relationship, you just know the person from Zumba class, right? To trying to build that relationship. So if every time you bring up real estate, uh, no. Yeah, yeah, they'll never answer your call. <laughs> Correct, yeah. right. But you have to make a point to tell them, I'm not calling about real estate. I want to know who you are or how you're doing, et cetera. Et cetera. That's so true. Yeah. I'm just curious. Does, has anybody experienced that where you make a phone call and people are like, oh, oh well, I got to go. I don't have time. Oh, yeah, all the time. Yeah, all the time. <laughs> yeah. So now you know, right? Like, it's okay to go ahead and just nurture the relationship in your calls. It doesn't have to be every single one. It's about real estate. Yeah, I think it's about the mindset. Mm -hmm. Change from cold call to care call. Remove yourself in this picture. Mm -hmm. Just care about the other side. Mm -hmm. I love that. I was gonna say too. I'm a I'm a big chicken. I'm not like a, I'm not a caller. And I same thing. I traveled a lot for work, and I do. I stayed in touch with all my friends through Facebook. <laughs> so what I started doing as a realtor is intentionally making sure I was friends with everybody and started interacting with their posts on my. Oh, your kids are so cute, or whatever. Never real estate, but then at the same time, I started posting from broker tour, like, "Oh, look at this amazing pool I saw today on broker's tour," or "Look at this listing I'm doing the open house," or whatever. And sooner or later, I mean, it's three years now, but now they start calling me. Like, oh, you're killing it in real estate. You're doing great, and I'm like, "Well, I've closed the deal in a really long time, but yes, it's so <laughs> great out there, you know? because it's perception, it's everything, and they're gonna start remembering that you're doing real estate." And you never had to even bring it up with them. Mm -hmm. And then you can start. That, so me now, I'm like year four. Now I'm ready to call. Now I'm ready to start calling them. <laughs> I love it. That's great. That's great. So what do you guys do to that's like always proven to be successful to get business? 
Mm -hmm. Question, hard answer. I mean, well, I like, do you do phone calls? Do you do postcards? Are you farming? Are you doing open houses? Do you, you know, what's, what's your pillar? Everything, a little bit of everything. <laughs> uh -huh. like Popeyes. Um, usually at Christmas time, I bring my A clients a gift. The, the listing I just got on Eastview and it's closing next week. I brought, they sold it to them in 2007, and I brought them a Christmas gift every single year and talked to them and sent them a Valentine's card right before they decided that Jackie was the one that was going to get the call. So you just have, you never know. Yeah. You just have to just keep in contact. I've, I've lost a lot of business not doing what Jackie did. And there's nothing worse than you have a client from two, 2008 something, and then, yeah. Yeah, and then you look up there, you have somebody go, okay, log all of my sales and, and see where they're at. And then you see, oh my gosh, they sold last year. Without Talk me. to Chris. What's that? Yeah. Talk to Chris. Get on I think too, like sometimes we <laughs> think that. that we do something and we're going to get immediate results. And that's just not how it works. And so I have... I thought this was great. I, my my husband took my kids to get like shots or something. And the pediatrician said, well, where's Kristen? And he said, oh, my husband said, oh, she's doing an open house. I didn't know that Kristen does, you know, real estate. And then he referred me a client that we closed the deal on. And then he was like, oh, give me some of your cards. I'll put them on my, like where clients check out or patients check out. So this is probably now like two or three years later, the receptionist calls me and says, I've been looking at your card for the last however many years. Is it okay that I call you? I need to sell my mom's house. And it's like, I mean, so things sometimes just take time. It's not going to be like an immediate thing. So just keep doing what you're doing and things are going to start to kind of bubble up, I think, eventually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. I'm kind of jumping ahead to one of the questions, fun questions you have on the other uh, sheet. So um, me and a friend, we, we pick a word a year. Um, that's kind of one of our goals for the year. And this year, mine was intentional. Mm -hmm. And so um, Jim and I, I mean, we always do our things <laughs> for the year. And so we really were looking at our past of our clients, where we got our business and things along that nature. And so we really just work our sphere of influence. But and using command, and I have really come to start using it heavy this last couple of years. I put all my notes in there when I last talked to them, what I talked about, and everything. So you've got that because, and then our admin will go in and she'll just start sending us, you know, because we do tasks and everything and, and actions from it. And so that way we at least know when was the last time I talked to them, make sure they're always in connection, whether we're, you know, doing the postcards or whether we're just having events. And we invite, we do silly events that people don't even come to, but it's the reach out that matters. It's just the reach out. They want to know that they've been included. It might have pain to them, have some kids, they don't have kids or whatever. So we're every holiday, and I have this calendar that has just what is today's holiday, quote unquote, Hallmark holiday, right? So it might be something totally silly, but then I'll pick a group and I'll just send them, hey, happy wine day, and put a little emoji, whatever. But it's a reach out, I'm thinking about them, they're thinking about me. Nothing to do with real estate, but that's when they come back, right? Because they think about it, whether they have, because we have a lot of referral business. And um, so, and the intentional part too is when we look back at, at Jim's and my age, you know, we've done a lot of trust sales. And so now we're being intentional this year to go after trust sales, as well as our friends' kids now <coughs> in houses, which is shocking. And whether here or even somewhere else, but now we're starting to change some of our marketing so that we're targeting those friends, right? Saying, hey, you know, we can help even if your kids are still far away and they're thinking about investing because it's amazing how many kids are and we can help them. We'll help guide them through the buying process. We'll help guide them and get them a good realtor wherever they are. So, um, so it's about being intentional for, but knowing your clients, know what you want to go after. Don't, I mean, there's so many things you can do and you can get lost in, but really be intentional and fixate on a couple of few things so that your, your energy is then constant, right? I like that. That's, uh, that was my word last year, intentional. intentional. It's very powerful. Don't you agree? Yeah. Yeah. How many of you guys pick a word for the year? 
Steve, that was one of my notes I took. See, I'm taking notes too. So <laughs> we're always learning. Yeah. yeah, that's the one thing about real estate. You learn something new with every with every transaction every year. Yeah. Did anybody else want to answer? I, I, think I just was gonna, gonna, I was just gonna say that we do a lot of events as well, and you don't know if someone's gonna come from we did a our um well, like I said, we do we probably try to do an event every two to three months. And we did one at the park in August. And someone came came from the furthest away. It came from Mountain House. If anyone knows where that is, it's really yeah. far. He came from Mountain House, and one of his buddies wanted to buy a house, so he connected me with his buddy. So that was that was helpful. And I know, and these aren't super expensive events either. Um, but one of the things that I do, Joseph, is we send out um, house anniversaries every year, and also birthday cards. Or so at the beginning of the month, what is closed. They're going to get a happy house anniversary. And whose birthday is it? Well, you may not know whose birthday it is, but that's what you can start. That can be a conversation starter. You say, I'd like to send you something, a surprise on your birthday every year. I just need your, your month and your day. And that's people are like, ooh, what am I going to get? It's one of my money. What am I going to get? And then that gives you a reason to call them. It gives you a reason to reach out to them. It gives you a reason to put your business card in whatever. So just little things. You, know, you haven't asked them for real estate. You yeah. just and said, I want to send you something. Those, those graffiti cards are cheap. Almost cheap. We have a ton of them if you need them. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite is the Popeyes because it gives me a chance to be, you know, face to face with them and to have them, even if it is for like two minutes, right? And they appreciate it because they're not expecting it. So, I, I mean, it takes a long time to drive from Pleasant Hill all the way to Gilroy and Monterey and this and that, but it's, it solidifies the, the relationship. And what I'm doing this year also is that I had many clients last year and the years before that were, you know, open house clients or referral clients. So I didn't really have a relationship so this year, I'm being very intentional about calling them and say, let's have coffee together. Let's have lunch together, which I hadn't done before, right? So then you start knowing more about them as, as people, their families, their dreams. And we don't even talk about real, well, they bring it up right. most of the time, right? right. But at least I'm, I, I feel that I'm closer and that's serving my next purpose, which is to start with the client parties, right? Because if I was doing a client party last year, there was no bonding agent, right? They were like people that I knew from a transaction, but not much more. So that's my goal for this year or next year. We'll I love it. So you're doing the face-to-face -face connection and building the relationship. And yeah. so now when you have your client event, now you really get to know who they are. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. great. Yeah. I love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so did you have something that you wanted to say? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I just think that I'm going to go back to confidence again. And I think that it's a muscle. And you just have to be the best person you can be. You have to be the best mother, the best father, the best daughter, the best son, be in the best health, be the best realtor you can be. And as long as you do this, that confidence grows and you can say, I'm a great person. I give back. And I deserve everything that I'm going to get. And I'm going for it. I'm all in. That's how I feel about it. I have a different approach. I, Mark tells me to settle down all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should do it. We all know that. <laughs> Read the contract. Yeah. 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 Um, just to answer your previous question, right? Uh -huh. um, opposite to face to face, I did a lot of online seminars. Oh yeah, so how did I, that work out? Yeah, I found. Uh, I feel like I found my niche, which I don't need to be social butterfly. I can just hiding behind the screen <laughs> and talk about like what I'm good at, mm -hmm. right? And then a buyer consultation to, uh, to me is like money money making. Yeah, so I get to speak. 
just in front of myself, and then people come to me and we book by consultation appointment. That's wonderful. I love it. And how long have you been doing that? Were you doing it during the pandemic? Or during the pandemic. And then and now you've continued it. Right. I continue. And since I build all the confidence by uh, explain my knowledge, transfer my uh, ex um, experiment, uh, ex yeah, expertise. Yeah, expertise to the first time home buyers. So now I have the confidence to do like in person. So oh, I love that. That's great. <laughs> Thank you. Judith. Yeah, I had a thought, which is don't wait for them to tell you that they're looking for a home or that they're ready to buy. One thing that I do on, on a daily basis, I, I know the people that I've been talking to over the years, what they at some point told me that they wanted or what they would love for their you know, wish list. So I'm looking for them every day. In this case, I'm talking about buyers, right? Mm -hmm. And I send them things and I'm like, look at this one. I have like a friend that bought an investment property and I know that eventually he's going to buy another one. Well, I keep sending them things, him things that I find that maybe will trigger it, right? Because you want to be, what, how do you say it? Top of mind. Right. So you want them not to forget about you. So even if they're going to buy in like two, three, four years, send them something to you never know if they inherited money or whatever, something changed. So make sure that you are present. I love that. Thank you. So I want to talk a little bit about leadership and why you guys agreed to participate in the ALC. So um, Jelaine. Why did you agree to participate in the ALC? And do you personally have any interest in, um, in something moving forward? Um, so I, I don't remember how long I've been on ALC. And, and every year I do reevaluate. You know, you'll notice that some very, very busy agents, it's tough. It's, it, 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 there's this perception that it, it takes a lot of time. Um, for me, though, what I discovered was that that confidence piece that Jackie's talking about, um, being rubbing elbows with with colleagues that are the best, um, that does rub off on you. So, initially, my my the reason I joined the LC was was that it was a goal of mine because you had to be in the top twenty percent of the office. So obviously, everybody wants to be there, right? So that was kind of my metrics on my goal sheet to be on ELC. However, having been on it, I now realize I get more out of it than I think I give, you know, being around these wonderful people um, and calling them my friends. Uh, in terms of leadership, um, I've been told I've been bossy and kind of a, a you know, that kind of person my whole life. Join the club. So, uh, <laughs> you know what, just real quick, how many of you yeah. ladies here have been called bossy? Diana, you're the only one, though. <laughs> so what's, what's always been interesting about that is that I, I you know, I was, I, it always surprised me because I'm like, wait a minute, what do you mean? And I do feel like, like it's not a personality. It's not your energy level or intensity. It's when you feel very, very strongly about something and you really want someone to benefit from that. I guess that can be called bossy. Right, that they they take they may take it. Anyway. Yeah, they may take it as bossy. So that's just somebody who's very confident, confident in their right. beliefs. And just just so so long story short. So I um I wasn't sure about being on on ALC um for a number of years, and every year there's always something that I want to learn or get better at. So whether it's growth, you know, networking with other agents, growing my downline, um getting more into better, building better habits around lead generation. All of that ties into the leadership stuff we do on ALC. So going forward, I think I do want to help uh, get grow my downline as a goal. So being part of the growth committee and part of the people that help do events and, and get to know agents and bring them in the office, that's part of the reason I'm on ALC. I love it. Thank you. Was that the answer you were looking for? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Kristen? Um, why did I join ALC? Yes. Why did you join? Um, 
well, I was asked and I, and I was at first like felt like an imposter, to be honest. But I was like, wait, I kind of still feel a little on the new side. Um, and I still feel like I'm in a place where I'm still really trying to get that trajectory with my career and with my, with my business. So, I mean, I found it to be an honor to be asked and I, and I agree with Jelaine. I feel like it's just really an opportunity to kind of be elbow to elbow with other very, you know, successful agents in the office. And I agree. I think, you know, we learn more than maybe sometimes what we give in the ALC. So I'm just kind of looking forward to, I mean, it's only been a few months, so I'm just kind of looking forward to learning more about how the office works and, um, you know, how I can give back uh, as well, because I feel like I've only been at KW, so I don't have a lot to compare it to, but what I do know as a new agent coming in with no experience, I feel like this office has given me a lot, a lot of support, a lot of faces out here that have been really helpful to me. So I would love to be able to give that back. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you. Denise? You know, they said some great remarks. Um, I'm actually a little more of an introvert, but every time I'm in some sort of organization, whatever, I always uh, set a goal for myself to get involved, um, just to push myself and along the lines. Uh, and I, I give back a lot of whether it's community outreach, whether it's um, some sort of leadership role, because I do have a gift of being organized and I like to help people in that way with my own talent. But I think what's really cool, and I agree with Jelaine, um, I utilize ALC as a way, there's so much benefits for us and to be on there and you can gain so much, whether it's interacting with other agents. Um, there's so many great committees that you can really learn about and um, do. So it's, I think it's two way, but I'm really finding that, you know, we can actually, we <laughs> can actually it's frustrating. Frustrating. Yeah. It's very frustrating. Anyway, it's it's a it's an excellent group. It's an excellent group to learn from. It's an excellent group to get back. Um, and you can set goals with it. And you can you know increase your business by the goals. That you do. So, I love it. And and I wasn't at the award ceremony, but did you receive a culture icon this year? Yes. yes. Congratulations. Thank you. So I was invited this year for the first time, and I was very excited to have the opportunity. Um, for me, I have a particular passion for certain types of training, like um, that have to do with more white glove concierge level of service and, and really taking our, like really fine tuning things so that we really present the very best that's possible out there in the marketplace. And so I had been talking to people about some of the classes that I would love to see. And I think hand in hand with the invitation was like, you have the opportunity to help, you know, invite the speakers and then, you know, bring the classes in that you like, like, you know, we got like feng shui and we're going to do bhakti shastra and now Joseph's going to do wine tasting. Yeah, did you guys know that? Joseph's going to do wine tasting. You'll hear me. Right. And we'll send that to you. Like, Kristen just put a class on the calendar for, about design. So just kind of the things that can kind of help us all elevate our game a little bit because we have really great classes on fundamentals and really and, and production. But I think like just those little nice touches is kind of something extra that we can all add. And so for me, that was kind of my my passion project of why I was really interested to be on the ALC, but you know, I've been lucky enough to rub elbows with a lot of these ladies even before the invitation to be on the ALC. And just being in the company of so many people and getting so many great ideas all the time, that's my number one piece of advice to people is don't try to do this alone. Just try to forge alliances and get those kind of, get your board of directors to help you with your business as well. That's great. Thank you. And thank you for your drive to get more um, more different kinds of training into the class, into the office. Are you guys enjoying what we've been doing? Yeah. Yes. That's great. Yeah. yeah, I'm really um, glad. And thank you for, thank you all for uh, so many great changes happening in this office this year. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, for me, I feel like I'm a learner. And at this point, I feel like, okay, I learned so much. I'm standing on everybody's shoulder, mm -hmm. right? I learned this from you, from you. And then um, I want to share with everybody. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the other reason that I joined last, since last year is because I want to be the bridge between agent and the leadership. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we, we're just venting or complaining, mm -hmm. right? But nothing happening. You want to be part of the solution, right? 
Yeah. And also, um, we're building Saratoga office. Yeah. So I want to help build Saratoga office. Nice. I love yeah. that. Nice. I love that. And you know, that's very much in culture to stand on the shoulder of the shoulders of giants yes. and then to share what you know. So it's very much in culture. Thank you. Judith. Um, for me, I, I was also honored when I was asked uh, two years ago. And to be honest with you, last year was not really that good. This year I was not going to keep um, being part of the ALC. And then I learned that this was going to be the ALC, all the members, not just the women, but also the men <laughs> of the ALC. And I was super excited. And I hope that you are seeing the change from last year to this year. Like we're putting a lot of hours and intention on everything that we're bringing forward. And then my personal motivation beyond the fact of being surrounded by top producers and amazing women that you learn from them and men that you learn from them all the time was like Diana said, I wanted to be the conduit of what agents needed. And you know that I'm at the office most of the time and I get, I talk a lot. So I get to talk to a lot of people and sometimes agents would tell me things and I was feeling that it wasn't getting all the way up the chain. So like I said, in corporate, I felt that my voice wasn't heard. So I wanna be that conduit for all of us to have a voice, you know, through all of us, of mm -hmm. course, but that was my particular goal to join the ALC. Mm -hmm. And I'm loving it. I it's love great. it. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you for doing your uh, trio mm -hmm. um, yeah. uh, role plays. That's wonderful. It's fun. Yeah. Well, I, I think so. I joined, I, I don't know, I don't know how many years. It's been a few years. And yeah, we did have a, a few bumps during COVID. It was difficult to, to navigate. How do we bring people back in the office? How do we get people engaged? What do we do? I think the, the biggest, which I love seeing everybody here today, not to hear us talk, but to learn what the ALC is, because if you don't, I didn't know what it was. I'm like, well, what is it? What is the ALC? And basically it's a fancy word for it's your board of directors. So if you have an issue, you, you can come talk to us. It's an open forum. And like Edith said, I mean, it's, it's a round circle in here and anyone can listen at any time and you can speak as well as long as you like said what you're going to speak about right I mean like yeah, you need you just to get on the agenda you just need to get on. that's it it's not like you need permission it's just because we already have the agenda what do you want to talk about or you want to have a poker night you want to do this you're you're having an issue with xyz and I don't think that I I know that the office doesn't know what we're here for and that's why we're doing the ALC moments. That's why we're here today. That's why we're here today. But initially, I think I got on the ALC. Um, it's funny to learn your lane. Like your lane is you, you're doing that three-way thing and the, the scripts and, and the teaching. And I love to teach. I love to bring people together. You know, I love to bring people back into the office. I love to bring people together. Believe it or not, I'm not exactly an extrovert either, but it's just something I still do love to do. And um, now I know my lane is to stay in the, that part of it, the teaching, bringing people together, and other people can handle the finances <laughs> and, and the numbers and all of that, because I know that's not what I'm good at. Mm -hmm. But I think it's, you know, that's why I joined and now it's evolved. I was like you, I didn't know if I was going to stay on another year. And it was like, well, that's not, that's not what the ALC is about. Pull, pull up your big girl pants and get back in there. Yeah. So I'm glad I stayed. I'm really glad you stayed too. Stayed. And you have been a culture icon as well, correct? Yeah, thank you for the work that you do here. The blood drives are amazing. It makes me feel like I- Please I, don't I, roll your eyes when I stand up to promote something else. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing now? What are you gonna right. do now? Right, but I love it because you really do help to promote community. You help to make us feel like the Bay Area Estates family. Everybody had so a good I time think, at that Red Day, didn't they? That was so much yeah, fun. Yeah, Red was Day was so great. So much. It was very great. well organized too. That was, they, they, were, they organized us like, you go here, you go, we're like, oh, okay. <laughs> what are we doing? Yeah. Oh, cool. I'm yeah. Okay. Yeah, they were, they were like, they were great. Yeah, it was great. It was great. Jackie, now, why did you join the ALC? You made me. 
I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, talking about community, nothing creates better community than a good party. <laughs> <laughs> so that's been kind of Denise, Denise, and I have really formed a great partnership in being able to. Um, I mean, I always have fun because I. What's our text? Our text uh, string? Oh, cultural goddesses. Cultural <laughs> goddesses. We have a text string that's called cultural goddesses. Oh, I love it because you're also a culture icon as well. Yes, she is. Yes. <laughs> Twice. Wow. Um, I love it. Anyway, I. No, 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 that's awesome. No, I, um, I love this office. And this office, I, I worked at Alum Pinnell before they became Compass for 15 years, and I did the same thing there on, in a different way and promoted different get-togethers, Halloween parties, and kind of the same thing I do here, but it just is so much more fun here because everyone really engages and everybody's all in, and it, it feels good to be appreciated even when I tell you to pick up your own mess. And <laughs> I, I just think it's, it's not just that being on the ALC, participating in all facets of how this office is run is really an enlightening thing mm -hmm. to see we have a budget and we're, we have to be on budget for this and then we're going to do this. But Mark Lancano is top notch as far as what he provides to us. And my husband now is top notch in what he provides to you guys as far as being there all the time to provide advice. Yeah, so all of this together, it's just, I was out with some friends, Kelly of ours recently, and I think I made them mad because I said, I just don't understand why anybody would want to be at any other office. <laughs> like, and it, was, it became a sore point. Yeah. I'm like, okay. <laughs> but really, what, what is offered to us, the sky's the limit. I mean, if, if you don't know exactly how to approach a situation, somebody's always got your back at you. And it's the same with the ALC. We, we struggle through a few things once in a while, but it's just getting it done. Uh -huh. That's and working together. Working together. Mm -hmm. It's community. Yeah, that's wonderful. Can I say something? Yeah. Also, I know that a big part of why we are part of the ALC is, you know, the community, what we get out of it and all of that. But also know that it takes time and commitment from us. So with that, um, what I'm saying is use us, right? We are your board of directors. So come to us, give us ideas, come with your issues because we are investing our time, our energy. We are, you know, we have all to bring our production, right? To our levels. And we are in a way sacrificing that time to be your board of directors. So again, use us, come to us, talk to us. When there, when there's Therese talking about an event, say rah, 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 instead of like, oh, Therese again, you know, like <laughs> we, all, we all need support also, right? So like in my particular case, I love the role play. It's not easy to put together every two weeks. It takes a lot of my time. I love it when we have people in it. So bring, you know, bring more people in. I'm sure that in all the events, right? So anyhow. Yeah, no, that's great. Thank you. You're welcome. So I joined the ALC this year. Over the 20, over my 20 years, I've been on ALC off and on. And I joined this year because I felt like I wanted to really help get our office up in our culture and in our education and our training and for the agents to see that, okay, Bay Area Estates is amazing just as we are, right? But there's so much more that Keller Williams International does that I wanted to bring down to this group here 
And it's been wonderful working with these women and the men of the ALC because everybody has that in mind of wanting to make this office the best place that it could be. Number one, to keep you guys here, right? We want to have retention. We don't want you to go anywhere. We want you to celebrate and be as amazing and as successful as you can be. Number two, we want to bring other agents in. And so we're teaching you how to do that. We're providing opportunities for you to invite people to the trainings, to the events. And then number three, it's just really fun. I mean, look at these people here and Joseph is here today. So the ALC is actually really fun, I know, right? So, um, you know, May, it's Mother's Day month. And then I found out it's, ash, it's actually National Boss Babes Day. <laughs> and I think that's on the 22nd. So it worked perfectly to have the women come up here. Joseph is one of the men on the ALC. And our next interview panel will be the men plus Shannon Rose. Um, <laughs> so that'll be the next interview. So any last words you guys want to say? I feel like talking about ALC, people don't know what it is because it is, I think, and I'm going to, I've never been in a real brokerage elsewhere, but this doesn't exist anywhere else. And as far as I know, that agents have a voice in their office and they have a voice to speak to their broker, their owner saying, look, this, this we, we want these things to happen. So the only way that we can make the office as best as, as it can be is to do what, uh, what Judith was talking about is engaging with all of you, and um, what what do, how what is the community we want to build as office two two hundred agents office wide, and how can we make it elevate for everyone? So, I, I think the ALC is is a unique experience too. To we also it's an open book. I mean, you can look at any financial from the company, or I know for a fact that no other brokerage is going to look let you look at their overall financials. So it's a great way to learn if you're not if you're not innately a business person that that does budgeting financial. It, it, it's amazing opportunity to learn all these things in a fun environment. So, so Jelaine, were you on the first agent? Were you on the first ALC when the agents could be? No, I was not. I no, was not. you were just on the committee. I forget. Yeah, I think I was the second year. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, in the beginning, when we first started the office, uh, Jim Myrick was productivity, uh, the productivity chair, and Jelaine and I were on the committee. So the way that the classes are and, and the way that the trainings have been, that's all what we had helped to create. And so we're pretty proud of that, right? Yeah. yeah. And, um, and so everything that you see here is, you know, all of these women that you see here, you know, they're, they're servant leaders. They're leading from their heart and they're also amazing agents. So if you have an opportunity to talk to anyone here, please feel free to do so. The men will be interviewed the next time and feel free to talk to them as well. I just really wanted to focus on the women here. Sure, yeah. So thank you very much for being here, thank everybody. You. Thank you. Yes, that's great. Awesome. Yeah. 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 Yeah.